It's pretty common to hear the fact that sharks are endangered, but what does that mean exactly? Are all sharks in trouble, or is it just a few species? I personally find it very frustrating when news stories or documentaries say that sharks are endangered without going into further detail because the details are critically important. On the one hand, many shark species are doing just fine. The Atlantic sharp nose, for example, is still abundant and has been handling human fishing pressures relatively well. On the other hand, nearly a third of all shark species are facing some kind of genuine peril, with an alarming subset being classified as critically endangered. This is the worst status for a wild animal, and over 30 shark species are currently classified as critically endangered. According to the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, these sharks are right now facing an extremely high risk of extinction in the wild. In other words, we might lose these sharks. In this series, we're going to be talking about critically endangered sharks, focusing on which species need our help, why they're endangered, and what we can do to save them. The day is Friday, May 6, 2022. I'm Dr. Jaws, and today I'm uploading part one of this series exploring which hammerhead sharks are right now, at this moment, critically endangered. So hammerheads as a group are not doing very well, and there are a couple of reasons why. For starters, they tend to spend most of their time inshore, meaning that they run into human impacts pretty often. Compared to most other shark species, hammerheads have an enormous first dorsal fin, making them especially vulnerable targets to shark finning. On top of that, hammerheads are biologically sensitive to all kinds of fishing, whether it's targeted or bycatch. The combination of these factors makes every species of hammerhead vulnerable in our modern world. However, there are five that are feeling the worst of these impacts. Five critically endangered hammerhead sharks. Number one, the great hammerhead, Sphena macaron. The great hammerhead is the largest hammerhead shark in the world, clocking in at about 20 feet long. This species is the very same hammerhead that we see so often on Shark Week, especially in episodes filmed in the Bahamas. Despite being such a charismatic presence, the great hammerhead is on the verge of collapse. Its enormous first dorsal fin is the primary target for shark finning, and the species is also accidentally taken as bycatch in other fisheries. On top of that, great hammerheads are often caught in beach protection programs, and even if they're released, their post-capture mortality is very low. As of right now, it is recommended that all fishing for great hammerheads must stop in order for the species to recover. Number two, the scalped hammerhead, Sphrena luini. Perhaps even more famous than the great hammerhead is the scalloped hammerhead, the classic iconic hammerhead shark that we see so often in nature books and documentaries. Scalloped hammerheads are a huge target of bycatch in industrial fishing, and they're also directly targeted for their large dorsal fins. It is likely that the number of scalloped hammerhead sharks caught in fisheries is underreported, leading to a serious concern about the species' survival. Like the great hammerhead, it is now recommended that all fishing for the scalloped hammerhead must stop in order for the species to recover. Number three, the small eye hammerhead, Sphernatudes. Unlike its larger cousins, the small eye hammerhead lives only in South America, where artisanal fisheries are intense across much of the Atlantic coastline. In Colombia, the shrimp trawl fishery has devastated local populations, and the shark is also a victim to commercial trawling and lawn lining across the continent. Some of these fisheries have the highest ratios of bycatch in the world, meaning that they're killing sharks like the small eye hammerhead without need. Measures to protect the species have already been proposed in Brazil, but they're also being met with increasing pressure from the fishing industry. Number four, the scoop head shark, Sphrena media. So far, we've talked mostly about fishing pressure being the primary threat to hammerheads, but for scoop head sharks, there's an additional danger in the form of habitat loss. Scoop head sharks use mangrove habitats as nurseries for their young. Unfortunately, many mangroves along the eastern Pacific coastline have been degraded or destroyed by development. In combination with this serious challenge, scoop head sharks are also uniquely limited to a shallow water life. While other sharks can occupy a much wider variety of habitats like the open ocean or twilight zone, scoop head sharks cannot. This species has no refuge at depth and can only live in a habitat where human activity is the highest, which is shallow coastal waters. Unfortunately, but unsurprisingly, scoop head sharks have already begun to disappear from areas of their former range. Number five, the scalped bonnethead, Sphena corona. 
at three feet long, the scalloped bonnethead might be the smallest kind of hammerhead shark in the world. Like its cousin the scoophead shark, the scalloped bonnethead can also only live in shallow water and also relies on mangroves as a nursery habitat for their young. The primary form of development that's destroying their mangrove habitat is shrimp aquaculture. In addition, there's unregulated fishing pressure on this species, and the scalped bonnethead has no species protection whatsoever. In order for us to save the scalped bonnethead, we really need to regulate our fisheries, reduce their bycatch, and create enforceable protection. With all of these threats, it's plain to see that these five species of hammerhead shark need our help. But what can we do to stop their extinction? So here are my thoughts. Number one, I think it's really important to take a closer look at our seafood. I mean, really, where does it come from? When you buy shrimp from the store, is it local or is it from one of the fisheries affecting scoop head sharks and scallop bonnetheads? And when you order seafood from a restaurant, well, how was that seafood captured? Were other animals like the scalloped hammerhead harmed in the process? These are uncomfortable questions to ask, but I think they're critical for conservation because when it comes to hammerhead sharks, bycatch is a critical problem. Number two, shark fins. Do not buy, do not trade, do not drink that soup. Number three, spread the word. Great hammerheads and scalloped hammerheads are pretty popular already, but the other three kinds of hammerheads need our attention. The small eye hammerhead, scoophead shark, and scalped bonnethead are super cool South American species that don't get featured in the limelight. So give them some praise. Make some art, do a school report, or even a research project. These are fantastic species to study, and each is in desperate need of some more conservation data, especially when it comes to their fisheries. Number four, be hopeful. This might sound kind of strange, but hear me out. Shark conservation and conservation in general can sometimes be a pretty depressing subject. But whatever happens, don't give up. Each one of us has the power to make good choices, and those choices matter. I hope you learned something new about these critically endangered hammerhead sharks. And if you want to learn more, I personally recommend checking out the IUCN Red List website for more information. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, especially to support part two of this critically endangered series, The River Sharks. Until then, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.